Rocks can be freed from the bedrock by means of glacial movement, frost, gravity, and human actions. One major reason that the northeastern United States ended up with so many stone walls is because the region had a huge supply of rocks awaiting farmers beneath the topsoil. These rocks were the result of the world's most recent period of glaciation. About 20,000 years ago, the Laurentide Ice Sheet had finally reached its maximum, covering much of what is now Canada and the upper third of the United States. This was the last period of glaciation for the ice sheet, which had made multiple appearances over the two million years of the Pleistocene. The Laurentide ice sheet was enormous, at over one mile thick in some places. To imagine the scale of this, an average two-story house is about 7.62 meters tall. The tallest man-made structure in the world right now is the Burj Khalifa, at 829.8 meters tall, and a mile is about 1,609 meters. When the glacier grew southward, it moved in a layer of water, because the immense pressure at the bottom of the ice sheet caused some of the ice to melt back into water, and ground up rock. It could move inches in one day, or not at all. In moments of lower pressure, sections of the bottom could freeze to the bedrock, and as the rest of the ice sheet continued to move, this would cause pieces of the bedrock to break off. The resulting boulders and rocks either ended up embedded in the ice sheet, crushed beneath it, or worn down as the ice sheet scraped them against the bedrock. In the northeast, the Laurentide Ice Sheet reached as far south as Long Island. The Laurentide Ice Sheet changed the landscape dramatically with its redistribution of rocky materials. When it at last began to melt, the meltwater collected a lot of sands, silts, and clays out of the rubble. This material, called stratified drift, ended up in lowlands, ponds, and lakes. The material that was deposited when the glacier melted is called ablation till. This often contains angular rocks and glacial erratics, which, since they were high up in the glacier, didn't get too worn down. Lodgment till is the paste that was deposited as the ice sheet moved, made of mud, sand, and crush-resistant rocks. This formed a mineral-rich hardpan that today lies beneath the topsoil and traps water near the surface, keeping soils moist. These soil conditions were great news for farmers, who would eventually seek out the high places where lodgment till was thickest for new settlements. Geographic location and elevation have a lot to do with the distribution of glacially deposited stones, and this in turn has had significant effects on the stone walls built in different areas of the northeast. For example, the ice sheet left the highest concentrations of stones at mid-level elevations, while at low elevations the stones are very round and bad for building walls. On islands like Martha's Vineyard, the bedrock is sandy and weakly cemented, and by the time the ice sheets reached them, most of the stones had already been deposited or crushed. This, along with the fact that there were also few trees, led to early walls being made with a small amount of stones. This is one possible explanation for the island's unusual lace walls. Farmers in places like Westchester, New York, found themselves with a very different stone supply. Here, the bedrock was tough, and there were many more angular deposited stones. The consequence of this was that the walls here were much larger and more dense. Most of the stones left by the ice sheet were not at the surface by the time that people started farming the land, for there was a thick topsoil that had been building up for thousands of years under the forests of the region. However, once the land had been cleared for agriculture and worked for a few years by the colonists, the soil was much more vulnerable to a process called frost heaving, by which stones are gradually lifted to the surface of the soil. Though the process is slow, the result is a steady crop of stones every spring. Farmers called their field stones New England potatoes because they appeared again every year even though the fields had been completely cleared the year before. Other forces also helped to bring stones to the surfaces of farms. Deeply frozen soil prevented spring rains and snow melt from being absorbed into the ground, so water ran over the surface instead, increasing soil erosion. Tilling and heavy pasturing also aided the arrival of stones, tilling by increasing the surface area of soil exposed to the cold winter air, and pasture by compacting the soil. A net loss of organic matter from the fields because of clearing and harvesting also resulted in less topsoil over time. By the time a farm was well established, clearing stones was usually a yearly necessity. For many farms, the easiest way to get them out of the fields was to deposit them at the borders, where farmers needed to have fencing anyways. Despite the huge quantity of rocks deposited by the ice sheet, the supply of stones in the soil was not infinite. On long-established farms, the stones would eventually arrive in fewer and fewer numbers each year. Some estimate that the stone crops lasted an average of 50 years on tilled land and 100 years on pasture. However, if a plot of land was abandoned before this could happen, stones could still be emerging every spring to this day.